the top five reasons you should retire to Connecticut. In this video, I interview Mary Hampton, that's M-E-R-R-Y, Mary, like Merry Christmas Hampton, out of uh, Weston, Connecticut. She's a realtor that covers that whole Weston, Westport area in Fairfield County. Um, it, Mary's a, a frequent contributor to the YouTube channel, very nice lady, uh, very well experienced in Connecticut and New England, uh, but uh, has been a realtor in Connecticut for 15 years. And, and we talk about the top five reasons to retire to Connecticut. I mean, Connecticut is just a beautiful state. No other way around that. It's expensive. Mary doesn't shy away from that. Um, it, but it's just, it's fantastic. I remember when I was growing up and when I, we were living in deep, my dad and I were living in the Washington, D.C. area. My mom and brother and sister were still up in Maine, you know, just driving through that, uh, you know, you go over the, you know, uh, the GW Bridge and get into Connecticut after you, uh, was it no GW Bridge? Yeah, to go through New York City and then you go and get to Connecticut, you know, kind of like the, I forgot what it was, but you kind of go through Hartford, like the middle of the state, freaking just gorgeous, man. And then you hit that Massachusetts Connecticut line. I mean, just absolutely stunning, fantastic. Uh, a little bit warmer climb than Maine was in Massachusetts. You know, we talked about Maine with the guys from uh, Portland, Maine the other day. Uh, you know, hopefully get someone from Massachusetts on here and some of these other states as well. You know, we'll certainly get someone from Georgia. But uh, Connecticut is just gorgeous. No other way around that. Um, it's not cheap, not cheap, but, uh, you know, something to look at for sure because it's a little bit more mild than northern New England, but you still have the same New England feel. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't know much about it. Hartford's kind of run down, I think. But, you know, they still got, you know, they have minor league baseball uh, minor league hockey, you know, the old Hartford uh, Whalers have moved out, and I, I think they got the Connecticut Whale. I'm not sure if they're an AHL team, which is a trip way from hockey, or if an ECHL team, which is a double way. But, you know, they got, a, they got all the amenities you could possibly want. You know, you got New York City right down to the south. You got Boston to the northeast. I mean, you got the mountains. It's just, it's a great place right there in the middle. Uh, it's, it's, uh, is politically to the left, as we all know for sure. Um, it, which which you're going to have higher taxes, more restrictions on your personal freedoms, absolutely. Um, but you know the four seasons they're just fantastic for sure. So anyway, so stop and listen to uh, what Mary has to say about it, and uh, I think you'll enjoy this if you're looking at a place to retire that might be a little bit less cold than the uh, the, the the deep northeast, uh, but also has the four seasons as well, and. Uh, and, 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 you know, follow up with Mary at maryhampton.com. Uh, you know, I'll put all the links to the, the show notes. And after you see this, you'll see a little promotional visit uh, video on the state of Connecticut that Mary has shared with me, which I posted here as well. All right. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you subscribing. Reach out to Mary if you have any questions and put comments down below. I'd love to hear them. Thanks now. One hundred and ten miles across, seventy miles from north to south, four colorful seasons, one compact state. From coast to country, you'll find endless things to experience in Connecticut. Whether you explore by sea or by land, in search of nature or hungry for culture, inspired by the vintage or drawn to the modern, You're welcomed by peaceful wildlife and non-stop nightlife. In a place where the past meets the future. And pause often turns to play.
Plan your trip today at ctvisit.com. So Mary Hampton coming at us from Westport, Connecticut, I believe. Is that right? Weston. I live in Weston. Weston. Is there a Westport, Connecticut? There is. Oh. That's where my office is. Ah, okay. So two different towns, Weston and Westport. And today we're going to talk about the... Towns. Oh, okay. So they're... Okay, gotcha. Weston, Westport. We're going to talk about the top five reasons that people should retire to Connecticut, which I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, no, I'll never... You know, Connecticut's to this. Like we hear all the time. Uh, but the irony of it all is that Connecticut is still a highly populated state. Uh, so inherently Densely populated. Yeah, yeah exactly. And so inherently people are not just as much as people say everyone's fleeing. It's just not true. I mean, some people are, but the vast majority are not. And actually there is some traffic going the other direction as well. So you know, let's not pretend that everyone's getting out of the Northeast and moving to the South. It's simply not the case. So, right. so Mary, welcome aboard. Tell us about Mary Hampton, please. Okay. Um, I'm a New Englander at heart. I grew up in Massachusetts, uh -huh. so on the coast, um, and ended up in New York City in, at business school. And when I graduated, I um, headed towards Connecticut. Um, my job was in White Plains, and I lived in Greenwich initially as a renter. Um, I've been in Connecticut 35 plus years, okay. so I do know it well. I've lived in Greenwich, I've lived in the Hartford area. And now I'm back in the Fairfield County area. Um, I, my career was for 23 years brand management. So I worked for Nestle, working on such products as Nestle Toll House Morsels, Nestle Quick, Nes Nescafe Coffee, and then um, took a job with Hube Line up in Hartford, which eventually became Diageo, which is a um, consumer packaged goods company that um, deals with wine and alcohol products. And my two biggest products were Amadan wine, which was way back in the day, and uh, Jose Cuervo tequila. Mm. Um, so after about 23 years, uh, the time ch came to make a change and yeah. I was done with corporate life. And my parents were, um, had passed away and I dealt with some of their real estate yeah. issues. Yeah. and. Um, realized I think I could be a better real estate agent than the ones that I was dealing with. So um, my second career now, 15 plus years, is in residential real estate in Fairfield County, Connecticut. Oh, man. So, and my office is in Westport, but Westport. I do deal with um, all the surrounding towns, about okay. six or seven towns. But I do know uh, realtors all over the world besides just all over Connecticut. So happy so to help. So someone has that. a need in a... You know, some other place in New York State, Albany, or something like that. They could certainly. I can. Up. We have a great referral network through globally. So I just actually have put someone in touch with somebody in Sarasota, Florida, okay. who lives in Weston and wants to move there. So, yeah. um, you know, it it happens all the time. Absolutely, absolutely. No, that's uh, that's good, and I, I find it interesting too you said you think you could be a better realtor than the ones you had dealt with and that's kind of like in financial planning where i'm encouraging people to be financial planners because uh there's a dearth of i don't want to say reputable but uh, just financial it's planners. honest it have integrity yeah. you know good follow-up yeah. you know it's just amazing how many people that just don't do the basics just basic blocking and tackling it's nuts and uh and it's not rocket science. I mean, and that, personable, you know. Per it, <laughs> you know, it's 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 amazing. So um, I've loved it. I, it's been good to me, and it's just been a lot of fun. So, so you, I mean, look, and folks, you know, Mary and I have a, a, a relationship beyond just having. I mean, she has followed me on YouTube for a long time, and and I know some of her background. I don't want to go too deep in that, but she can move anywhere she wants. So let's just put it that way. And in fact, we're well, one time we're having a discussion, and uh, and at the end of the day, Mary just said, you know, we like it here. We're gonna stay here. And uh, tell us a little bit about that, Mary. I mean, again, you could go anywhere you wanted, and, and you just chose to stay in Connecticut. Um, well, we found a house. Um, we've lived here now five years, and we just love it. It's all on one level, so we can yeah. age here. Um, it's got two acres, um, so the privacy is incredible. It's beautiful. It's great for our dog. We got a new dog when we moved in, and um, 
uh, we just love the fact that it's quiet and yeah. beautiful and just wonderful for us. So um, my goal, though, is to pay off that mortgage so, <laughs> <laughs> before I retire. So um, that's what I've learned from Josh. Yeah. So you'll be keep so people can hire you for a realtor for at least a couple more years while you have your mortgage. Well, you know, it's one thing you can be a realtor forever. Yes, yeah, right, exactly. So um, you know, I'm. I'm not sure when I'll retire. So Right. So paying off the mortgage isn't the impetus to hang up your realtor boots. No, okay. not at all. Yeah, it's yeah, just really my financial planner told me I should do something. Yeah, so we well, can go on a... vacations and, you know, do more fun things. Uh, that guy sounds like someone other people should get to know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, Trust me. Yes, I highly recommend Josh. So I'm just, uh, I, so let's go into Connecticut. So I mean, everyone and their mom has negative stuff on Connecticut. A little bit of my background, obviously I'm from Maine, but I remember you know, my dad lived in D.C. And my mom was in Maine and I just remember driving back and forth. And I always loved going through Connecticut. It was just, it's like, it was just fantastic. I'll, and this on 84, and what's the other one? 68 to 84, something like that, or 81 to 84, I forgot. 684 to 84? Something like that, yeah, going through, and, uh, yeah, absolutely. And then you go somewhere, you know, through Sturbridge or whatever that's called. Up right, there. you get up to Mass Pike. Yeah, yeah. it's just, yeah. it's freaking gorgeous. I loved it. And um, yeah. and now, but the negatives, obviously, are, oh, it's, you know, crazy with the expenses and all that, and uh, which is, the, which, which is, Funny because at the end of the day, you know, name me one state that doesn't have uh, property taxes or one state that doesn't have some kind of expense. I mean, obviously, it's more expensive in the Northeast, but tell us, you know, some of the best. Well, let's just go into it. What are the top five things? That well, my should- number one is the state is beautiful. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It just is gorgeous. It's got the New England charm. Yep. Um, we've got everything we've got lakes, rivers, mountains. Long Island Sound, so you, you can imagine just the beauty that that we have, especially for the four distinct seasons. Yeah. So you can ski, you can boat, you can swim. Um, and then there's, there's the architecture. You know, it's, it's just really beautiful from the old antique homes yeah. to yeah. Um, the, just the landscape al- al- alone is just so beautiful. So... I think most people um, come here and are amazed at how beautiful it is. So I can't recommend it enough to come for a visit. I, I'm surprised how many people actually don't know the beauty of Connecticut. Actually, it's uh, I mean, it's 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 uh, it's just it's, it's a, a, a dyna- in terms of a dynamo of, of some of the most pretty estates in the in the union. Connecticut's in the top, probably easy top ten, if not top. Five. Absolutely, and I think if you can attach that video, that Connecticut yeah. state tourism did it just takes you through all the beauty from litchfield county where you've got you know unbelievable charm and then you've got uh the seashore and skiing at ski sundown and so it's just it's just amazing what the state can be and it's sort of going into my number two yeah it's a compact state so you're close to everything. Yeah. You don't have to get on a plane to go skiing. You don't have to get on a plane to go boating and have a yacht and go out into the Long Island Sound and have a nice day on the water. Um, it's just available. Like to go from Greenwich to the top of Massachusetts, it's, it's what, two hours. So, I mean, you can get everywhere and New York city's close yeah. Vermont's close Boston's close. Um, the Rhode Island beaches are close. So, um, I can't stress enough that you can get there quickly and have wonderful day trips. If you want to experience something outside where you live. So now in Maine, they say you can't get there from here and Connecticut is the exact opposite. You can get anywhere from there within the state. You know what I'm saying? Right. And as, as, my brother who lives in New York City said when I lived in Hartford, he goes, Hartford's just you just pass through it. <laughs> it's like and it's it, it's true. It's it's a lot of people go through Connecticut. They don't stop and take in what it has to offer. So I recommend that. On the um I just a, a little bit off tangent, but you know, and some would think Connecticut is gonna have like the New York City kind of uh people, like where the people are just kind of aggressive and I don't want to say rude necessarily, but busy. 
um, that, you know, obviously part of Connecticut is filtered from uh, the New York yeah, City. Yeah, I'm in Fairfield County where we get a lot of transients, yeah. transports from New York City. So I know what you're talking about. Um, but I would say when I lived up in Hartford area, it's just people are just so down to earth. Yeah. You know, I can't stress that enough. I think you can find that arrogance and um, rudeness anywhere you go. Oh, yeah. If you yeah. want to. Well, still New yeah. England. That's what I think a lot of people don't realize. Connecticut is New England and the bulk totally. of it is, is absolutely. And, uh, and actually the white picket fence and exactly. little towns yeah. and town greens and the congregational church being in the middle of it all. It's just beautiful. Well, it's funny because um, actually the, the thing I always crack up about New York is that when you actually know New Yorkers, they're not nearly what the stereotype is. I mean, I mean, look, you can come down, people say, oh, the South, you're so slow. And you go down to Midtown or Bucket in Atlanta and you're going to get rude, you know, obnoxious people as well. But we're in the South, you know, it's just as funny. It's like the, the stereotype persists. And, and you know, I think in New Yorkers, especially if you've been in New York and something happens, they help you so nice yeah. they're so people, nice, people. So. yeah 100 uh, and uh i 100 um all right so what's number so we got the scenery we got the compactness what would you say number three is mary quality of life you just can get everything you absolutely want as a as a human being here it's just um there's wonderful culture lots of museums art galleries theater um and you can get on the train and Go to New York City if you want even more. But there's great food and the education is huge here. Yeah. You know, yeah. great schools, great colleges. Yeah. Um, if you want to take a, a class at night, you've got many university options here to do that. Um, and it's just steeped in history. You know, this was a big Revolutionary War state. Lots of things going on here. So I just can't um tell you how great the quality of life is yeah. from great restaurants great culture great scenery i just can't emphasize it enough you, you had mentioned that the rhode island beaches is that are, are connecticut up that way is that kind of where the real i hate to say real well what are? happens is long island sound you have beaches and they're sandy but it's not the ocean okay so you have to get to rhode island to really have the ocean because that Long Island kind of sound ends. Yeah. Right. Okay. So but, it's okay. um, it's just if you really want w big waves and real the real ocean, you have to get to Rhode Island. It's okay. Uh, someone just opened up the door, so you might hear Pablo here just a second. So just this is the <laughs> professionalism my YouTube subscribers have come to <laughs> desire. Um, Pablo Bark in the background. Um, but uh, I'm curious with that Long Island that would protect. I think that other side of it from hurricanes and stuff to some degree well right? it's great if a hurricane's coming up it's going to hit long island new york yeah and then hit long island sound and then connecticut so we have had some hurricanes but they sort of die out quickly yeah. as soon as they hit land so, so you so might not get the big waves but you're getting less hurricanes. Andy, we got we got um unbelievable winds they, they just the poor trees here got so I mean, Sandy. Parkway, Sandy, okay, gotcha. the winds were incredible. Not a yeah. lot of rain. It was more the surge afterwards okay. that you heard about in New York City. But the the Merritt Parkway that has, it's just two lanes of traffic on either side. Beautiful. No trucks are allowed on it. Um, there were just so many trees down. Yeah. They closed that. It was just hor horrible everywhere. Trees were down everywhere. Mary. Sure. Come here, buddy. Come on, go. No, no, okay. You stay. Okay. Um, but because Hurricane Sandy, uh, hurricanes get protected from the Long Island, there wasn't uh, as you know, like in New York. Remember, I forgot one of those towns in uh, Staten Island just got hammered. You know what I'm saying? But that didn't happen as much in Connecticut in terms of. Well, we did have um, some surge, like Milford did get hammered. Okay. Um, so there was some of that, but we that was the last. That was a hurricane that we haven't had um that was like the first one in a long time so uh, you know the crazy i remember my sister you know she lives up in morristown and uh 
my uncle, they lived in Burnsville, and I don't think they lived there. I, I don't think. Oh, they lived New there. Jersey. Yeah. Yeah, and man, you drive through there, Mary. This is like six months a year. It just these huge trees would just knock down like toothpaste. It was crazy. And uh, it's it was, the same thing. Yeah, exactly. It was, and you're talking Morristown is not on the water. You know what I'm saying? It's deep in the. No, it was it was incredible how far up it went. It was, it was incredible time. how how worse it could have been. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, that, that was, that was insane. Um, all right. So that's interesting. So I've looked, I didn't, you know, I've looked at the, uh, so if you want the big waves, you want to go north of Connecticut towards Rhode Island, but you can still be on the beach and have the ocean just, you won't be that right. you'll feel calmer. Okay. And you can, you can definitely sail and boat and yeah. And fishing. Yeah. Lots of rivers, a lot of, that's what Litchfield County, a lot of people go up there and fly fish. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But um, it's, it's just remarkable how great anything you want is here in the state. You do not have to leave the state. All right. So uh, number four. I'll slide okay. into what number uh, four. Number four sort of goes from the quality of life to just there's plenty to do. Yeah, right. Um, if you want to get on a quick train to New York City, you can do that. You can find theater. You can find a restaurant. You there. Yeah, um, you can go boating. Um, How far food, away is Weston to New York by a train? If you just said I'm hopping, I mean, is there a train stop minutes. up there? Sixty-five minutes. Okay, so you can hop on a train in your town in Westport. I got to go to Westport okay. to get it. And then take a train takes an hour to get to New York City. You don't. You can. You can be merry if that means you can drink and stuff and hop on the train, come back and all in one day. Right. That's what I mean. It's the day trips. That's like if you wanted to go to the Rhode Island beaches, you could do it in a day. You don't have to stay overnight or anything. Are the trains that go to the Rhode Island beaches? No, you'd have oh. to drive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How much does it cost to take a train from Westport to New York City? Um, round trip, it's a little over $22. But you don't have that. to drive. No. No tolls? I mean, just the... Uh, okay. cool. No, I take it all the time. Oh. That's, if I go to New York, that's what I do. Interesting. Yeah. Because then you're, you don't have to worry about parking no. in the city or anything. Yeah. No, and then you can sit on that 60 minutes in each way and read the book or whatever you want to do. You know right, what exactly. Yeah. All right, so yeah. the, the level of activity and the proximity of all activity is all right there. Um, I don't know if this will go into number five, but how about, I, I, I can't imagine health care is a concern in terms of hospitals and stuff. I mean, ding, 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 ding. You got my number five. So. <laughs> So it, it it does have wonderful health care. Um, Yale New Haven has quite a uh, group oh, right, of hospitals, yeah. and it just you know people want to come here as doctors, and and so there's just a great medical community. Sorry, right, I forgot Yale. I mean, for heaven's sake, Yale's up there, and uh, Yale's got a good medical school, presumably. <laughs> right, and they're t they're starting to. I guess this is sort of the consolidation that's going on in healthcare. They've they've now gone in with Greenwich Hospital and. Um, they're trying to reach out to get a bigger community around Connecticut, but um, Stanford hospital is a great hospital uh, as well. So, and then in Hartford, you've got quite a nice healthcare system too. So, All right, so Hartford is like central Connecticut on the, going towards the East. Obviously that whole. It's actually centrally located. It is the state capital Hartford. It's smack dab in the middle of, okay. How about the northwest corner? What's uh, what's going on up there? I mean, obviously that's in Litchfield County. Exactly. So um, you probably have to get to Waterbury to get to a, a hospital. Okay. So um, yeah, you're a little more remote. Right. That that would be the Vermont rural. area kind yeah. of in a yeah. Albany, New York kind of thing. That kind of. Yeah, I think you just that's a decision you make if you're right. going to retire up in Litchfield. So. But the rest of the state, I think you're well covered from a retirement. Gotcha. Right. State. But I mean, it's a different, um, how about, you know, if you go up to Litchfield, you're definitely, it's almost like being in Western Massachusetts or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So Absolutely. it's more rural, more uh, late, I don't want to say laid back necessarily, but probably cheaper to imagine on the budget because there's less, I mean, there's less demand because it's a more rural place. It's just that. I would think right, right. and there there's some a lot of new yorkers have weekend houses yeah, up there gosh, so there's a sophistication to the area you know they demand certain types of restaurants and yeah right food food there are a lot of foodies there so kind of like maine you got a lot of boston folks who have vacation homes in maine and the same 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 thing applies so right, you so know, it, 
if you retire in Litchfield, you you may be actually retired in New York City and just have the weekend house up there. Gotcha. So. Okay. That's interesting. As yeah. an escape, as an escape hatch to get out of New York City. Right. But are other people retiring uh, outside of New York City? I mean, are they coming down from Boston? Are they coming maybe. I, let me ask you a question. You're from Massachusetts, and obviously we don't think Connecticut and Massachusetts are all that much different, but how about from a climate perspective? Is it a little bit warmer? Uh, you know, growing up on the South shore of Boston, um, I find that the spring here is so much better. Okay. So that much, you know, hundred miles South. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, you have a longer, nicer spring in, in uh, Massachusetts. It was like, it went from winter to summer. Yeah. We rarely had a really nice, easygoing spring that you could enjoy the flowers and the trees coming out. So from a climate standpoint, that's about the only thing. I think our snow is probably about the same okay. if you're in the mountains or whatever. But maybe the, the winters uh, subside quicker in Connecticut than they Well, that's do. true. Okay. Yeah. In Connecticut yeah. and Massachusetts. Yeah. That's interesting. All right. So we got... Wrap up. So give us a top five again, and then we'll go into some of the negatives that people might want to be concerned sure. with. As they're concerned. So number one is the beauty of the state. Yeah. Unequivocally number, agree, without question. It's incredible. Number two, it's we're close to everything. That's not debatable. Number three, the quality of life. Number four, you've got plenty to do. Yeah. And number five, excellent health care. Well, that's important for retirees, Mary. Excellent health care. That's yep. huge. Huge. Yep. All right. All right. So negatives on Connecticut. Obviously, the first one come to my mind would be property tax. Any place in Northeast, New Hampshire, uh, you know, Massachusetts, Maine, all the way down is going to have high property taxes. Tell us a little bit about that, if you would. Sure. I think um, because schools are so important, right. Right. I think that's what drives the property taxes. So to get a good quality of life and to bring your family up with excellent schools, you're going to have a high property tax. Yeah. So. Um, my num my first negative is the cost of living. So the property tax sort of okay. in, in involved with all of that. So, you know, we've it's um we have the highest gas tax of anybody. So um it just comes with the quality of life, I think. You How know, much we, is a gallon of, of gas right now? Um just about three dollars. Okay. Right. And I don't know how much of that is gas tax, but we always are told that, you know, for a while we never had an income tax. Yeah. And then they instituted, but they had all these other little taxes. Like we have a personal property tax on our car. Yeah. And you would think once we got the income tax that they would have taken away all those little taxes, but they didn't. <laughs> Government taking away taxes? You crazy? Um, yeah, so, yeah. Um, so that, you know, some people are surprised when they move here that they have to pay a tax on their car annually so um, well, i think most well, i don't know about most that you know i remember i have to pay that here in georgia is only 20 bucks but this is what people don't understand when you register it it uh, gets you big time see that's the issue when you buy a new vehicle in georgia it's huge i think yeah. i had to pay six thousand bucks or something like that on a oh, thirty thousand. Wow. i mean it's not so see, it's like, sort of yeah they get you all in one but, right i mean these guys are gonna get you every which way they can Huh. So let's just say you had a $500,000 property in Connecticut. Just rough idea of property tax. 10000 bucks. Probably eight. Okay. You know, That's not that bad. Um, ours is just about twelve, and ours is about eight fifty. our house. So, oh, all right. Um, well, that's not, all right. Yeah, that's so it's, you know, it's up there, but, you know, with the new salt tax, it's just like everybody wants to get something with 10 and nothing more. So, um. You know, and then you have oil or gas heat you Ooh, know, right. because we do have winters. It does cost some money to heat the house. So, and then your air conditioning costs. And how stuff. much would you say? Um, so, what do you have for your heating? You it's on? about we have oil, and it costs about three thousand dollars a year. Oh, just like the guy up in Maine. So basically, two hundred fifty yeah. bucks a month for uh, for oil. But because and you're a little bit south, you probably have a little bit more of an air conditioned cost because it's definitely because we do it doesn't get that humid, but it does get hot yeah. um, in July and August. So, you know, that can it depends on how cold you keep your house. <laughs> so that's probably another three. All right. So, I mean, but every single all right. And I'm not at the end of the day, utility bills are you're going to get those anywhere. 
So higher property tax on average by far, but certainly that's And the not cost a, of buying a house, I think, is probably a little bit higher than the, the South or whatever. Cost of, because the price of the house or because- The price of, of the house, that's what I mean. Okay, oh yeah, well, absolutely. No, I think that goes into it for sure. All right, so yeah, but in that way you have higher property tax as well. So higher property tax, and yeah, probably higher utilities, higher cost of living generally speaking, um, okay, and you said it costs you about, and you have a, a house that's you know bigger, uh, so it costs you about two hundred fifty bucks a month to heat with oil. Uh, is that? Do you have any natural gas up there by chance? Does anyone have? There is some, um, not a lot, but um, it, it we're, the gas company is trying to expand in right. certain areas of Connecticut where we are not. Okay. Um, so, as new builders come on, they try to get natural gas or propane. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So, um, all right. It's cleaner. People want it versus oil. I love natural gas. That's the same thing in New York. I mean, they're trying to expand that too, and they're running up to issues right. with the, <laughs> the county. Now, yeah. Um, yeah, now you did say something that's interesting that you found. Yeah, you emailed to me about social security taxes in Connecticut. Tell us a little bit about that, if you don't mind. Well, I, the state is trying to make sure people don't leave the state, and um, they've just passed that it's going to be phased in eventually they will not be social security tax yeah. for those retirees getting social security. So yeah. I don't have the details of exactly what the phase in is, but it's a good, it's good news for retirees. I think it's a hundred thousand bucks. If you're married, your AGI is less than a hundred thousand bucks. And I think it was 75. If you're single, you don't pay tax on your social security. Okay. And that's, uh, that's good. That's, uh, that's actually fantastic because the vast majority of people are going to have income less than those two amounts by right. far. And if they right. do their retirement planning correctly, they won't have to come <laughs> close to that. Um, but anyway, that was interesting because that's a uh, bugaboo for many, many people. I can't believe they're taxed by Social Security. In, uh, in Connecticut, rightly so, I said, yeah, we, we need to. Uh, we we need understood to. that. They listened and they made that happen. It's a step in the right direction. How, any uh, homestead exemptions or anything like no, that? No, we don't have any homestead exemptions. Nothing. I if think you're if, if you're in, if you're retired, certain towns do help you with your property taxes. Okay. But, I, you know, there may be income levels that you have to meet and things like yeah, that. So, right. but I know that there are some retirees that have been helped in the local area. I do know of that. So folks, just be advised if you're getting ready to move to Connecticut, recognize that your property tax is going to be a little bit on the high end. Most likely you're probably not going to pay tax on your social security income tax. Mary, what's the, uh, what's the running rate on income tax up there? It's Any about 5%. Okay. Again, it all, a lot of it has to depend on um, how much income you're getting from your uh, 401k. Yeah. And like that. Yeah. So that's where they really nail you. So and it's not so much a, on your actual income and on, on what your salary is. It's more the, what do you call it? Unearned income or what? I don't know. What that's I know, right. right. Your, or your, your distributions from IRAs. If you get uh, yeah, right. unearned income, exactly. If you get dividends and all that. And the easy way to kind of estimate that, of course, is go to uh, my tax calculator on Heritage Wealth Planning. You hit tax calculator and state by state taxes and you can put it right there for Connecticut. And as always, I tell people, it's not the state income tax that's the problem, it's the feds and you're not escaping the feds. Uh, the state is a property tax. There's no other way around that. Uh, so I, everyone says, ah, I can't believe I'm moving to Connecticut or wherever. I said, look, it's not that state, it's the fed and your concern is a property tax. And if Connecticut, this, I mean, look, man, I'm not trying to make it sound better than this, but if you're paying 8,000 bucks on a $500,000 home, and Mary's just estimated, we don't know that. You'd have to look right. at your specific scenario. Call That's me not bad. The specifics. Yeah, right, every, right, absolutely, because you could be up in Litchfield, wherever that is, or you could be in, you know, where it you It all go. depends on the town and how yep. they divide up their um, mill rate for the exactly. year of the budget that they have for the town. Well, so. we've moved, um, it's, it is interesting, you know, a lot of people, I think, discount the quality of schools in some regard, and, uh, and I do too, but it's funny. We moved around a lot, and let's just put it this way: the uh, as much as New Jersey, we lived there for 22 months. I mean, that school system was was fantastic. But we were paying through the nose nose through it. No other way around that. And so, it was it was fantastic, but it's fantastically expensive too. But if you want a good school system, not all the time. I mean, DC spends more per capita per ch child than any other state in the union. I know they're not state, and they have horrible schools. But generally speaking, there's a correlation there, and and I, I just remember 
New Jersey by far and away was the best school system in terms of what we've been through. We've been through many and uh, in Connecticut would be the same thing. Presu presumably, again, the situation will be where you are looking specifically. Um, Mary, so how can people get a hold of you if they're, you know, inquiring about uh, Connecticut for mom or whatever, just maybe themselves or something like that? How can they get Yeah, hopefully you'll them? put some links for, for you, for me in, in the description, but MaryHampton.com. Mary, it's Mary Hampton. like Christmas, M E R R Y, Hampton. Like Hampton. One word. Yep, Hampton. Yep. H A M P T O N dot com. Before I forget, I'll put all the links in the show notes. Before I forget, Mary, what um, uh, health, now we talk about healthcare, like assisted living facilities, nursing homes. What, what's the status? And I would presume uh, they'd be popping up all over the place, but I don't want to make a presumption there. Any thoughts on, on that kind of environment? There's definitely. Um, more 55 plus communities coming along. So um, I know that, I mean, we've had um, assisted living for many, many years when yeah. my parents were getting ill, maybe, what is it, the start of the 2002. So I looked into a lot. So there are many options. There's nursing homes, there's assisted living, anything you want is really yeah. here, but I, they're not, I noticed you said that about somewhere, so they were popping up everywhere. There's not like a huge building of that okay. going on here. I think they've been established for I'd a while. I'd say they might already be there. And here in Georgia, they're going up like crazy. Um, so maybe you're getting more, you know, our population is only 17% um, 65 plus. So oh. it isn't like a, a predominant level of, of population. That's interesting. Actually, it leads me to another question real quick. We had talked about, you and I off, offline, about sellers versus buyers market. And uh, you want to just chomp on that a little bit, Mary, because if someone was looking to move, <laughs> now might be the time to do it. Yeah, no, it's definitely a seller's, um, I mean, a buyer's market. So um, if you price your home right and it's ready to go in really good condition, um, you can make a deal with a buyer because we – um, are getting a lot of buyers right now, but we don't have a lot of good inventory. There is inventory, but not great inventory that the buyers want. They want, today's buyers don't want anything to do. You know, the old days of building sweat equity and yeah. taking care of things, they just won't do it. So unfortunately, the sellers have to take the time to get their house ready for the market. But we can get you out of here quickly if you listen to what I have to say <laughs> because you see <laughs> what's going right and and get it ready and uh, if it's in a great location you'll have a buyer in no time on the other hand the buyers are not as much as the seller so if you're a buyer you can go in there and get a pretty good deal right definitely yeah, yeah they control the market right now yeah that's interesting the sweat equity days are gone huh that's they uh, are it's so sad because that's really how people you know, they didn't care if they had to do a kitchen or a bathroom or, you know, even a new roof or whatever. But people just, they want to pay for it right now, ready to go and move on and just deal with what their family life requires of yeah. their time. So hmm. it's really, you know, people want to be close to town. They don't want to have a lot of acreage. You know, it's, it's really changed. Well, that's interesting because things always pendulum you know what i'm saying well, that's so, true it's uh goes in circles so. so if someone is looking for a, a house that might need a new roof and is willing to uh, take the time to to hire that out after moving in they could probably get a better deal than a you know a turnkey thing i think um especially yeah, no that's what you know the smart people that are willing to renovate they get a very good deal yeah exactly huh. but you know some of these millennials are lazy they just you know <laughs> I'm sorry to say. No, well, that's true. I mean, they don't, or they don't know. But I, my, my thing is, even if you don't know how to do it, you can certainly contract it out and, you know, live on, uh, you know, have a tarp over your roof while you're living there to get it contracted out for a couple months. And you could save probably a significant amount of money on a, on, on the buyout. Yeah, saying. it's more, it's more the um, cosmetic things yeah, that not. they seem to under want. You know, they want the quartz countertops in the kitchen and, you know, hmm. beautiful gray paint, great and gray and white. <laughs> That's what's going on right now. Do you think millennials 
are not I just want to say millennials, but just anybody. They don't want to, you know the old days. You had to do the starter home. You built up. You built. You see what I'm saying? And the old days is me, and I'm sure you too, Mary. It almost seems that not. This is just my own observation. There's no science to this that. A lot of the young folks coming out now don't want to go. They just want to jump directly into that. Well, dream. it's it's hard in Connecticut to do that. You still got to do a condo or a yeah. starter home unless someone in the family is helping them. Yeah. Right. Um, so that's what's really stalled the market here is the move up down, you know, move up from your starter home to a middle home. Yeah. Or your forever home. Um, those forever homes are ready to go, but they're just no one if there's just not that uh selling happening yeah so well for someone who's uh i don't know that just sounds like opportunity for people who have the uh, the know-how to look at opportunity for sure um all right i will put links in the show notes everybody for mary uh and then uh you know mary hampton again m-e-r-r-y h-a-m-p-t-o-n maryhampton.com and uh, and uh, Mary's a, a, a regular on the uh, the channel. So uh, if you have questions about Connecticut, just email or comment or whatever because uh, she's regular on the uh, on the YouTube channel. And uh, and I'm sure she'd be happy to, to chat with you for sure. Very happy, happy to help anyone. Hey, thanks, Mary. Hold on just a second. I'll hit stop. So thanks again for being here. Thank you, Josh. You got it.